Okay, so a guide for Highlander. I've been suggested this a couple of times through Reddit and also YouTube comments. So I just decided to make it now that I'm rep 50 total. So um, I'll have to put out two disclaimers before I start the video. First of all, even though I'm total rep 300 and my Highlander is rep 50, I'm not the best Highlander. I do pretty well with him, and he's my favorite character, but, you know, he's not my best character. I just really like him. But, you know, after all this time that I play with him, I know pretty much all the tech there is to know, I'm sure. And I'll just teach all of it to you in this video. And the second disclaimer is, uh, I know there's a lot of new players going to, into the game. That's, what, that's another reason why I want to I make this guide, so if people want to pick up Highlander, they'll have a good guide for it. And Highlander is probably one of the hardest heroes to play in the game. Uh, I'd say Valkyrie is the hardest because of how kind of underpowered she is. But Highlander has a very, very uh, <laughs> big hit with a lot of depth to it. So don't expect to just g grab this gigantic beef man and do well with him. Like yes, he deals a shit ton of damage now, but he's still very hard to learn. I'll split this this video into three parts. The first being a basic guide, so you just get on with his basic kit. Then I'll just go uh, go for an advanced guy with all the tech, and then I'll actually show some footage of me using all my uh, Highlander skills. And yeah, that, that's about it. I'll have the timestamps on the description. So let's start off. Okay, so the basic guide starts with his basic mov movement. Uh, I don't know how to turn off gear stats on the dual practice mode, so the damage values aren't the, the ones that he actually deals, but not all the damage values anyway, so I'll just tell you. So his basic light, light heavy chain deals 15 damage for both lights in any direction, 35 damage by any, by any side direction on the heavies, and 45 on the top heavies so overall insane damage he's light into heavy also the same damage values one thing they changed with season 5 was that his second light actually has hyper armor don't really use I don't really use this on 1v1s because the time is the same as the heavy they're both 600 milliseconds the second he heavy and second light are both 600 milliseconds so they don't really throw off the opponent that that much but it's good for to go against assassins because they'll think they dodge your heavy and then you can follow up with the heavy if they dodge your light then you can still have the attack on because if they dodge your heavy you have this gigantic recovery time that can punish you so it's good for people that dodge all your attacks so you can throw them off from there other than that against turtles it's not great because that's just an easy light parry and also it's good for ganks, you know, just to throw off a, ga a gank squad. You can just switch target to the second light to stop an attack and then go back into the other guy. Go top heavy. You know, that's basically it. On to the offensive stance. Uh, there's pretty much not much I'm going to show on this basic part of the video. Because I'm not going to show the tech yet. So I'll just show the basic stuff. Every heavy attack deals fifth 40 damage. And every light deals 10, I think. And the lights are 400 milliseconds. And if they're a block, they have they they have a superior block property, so you don't actually uh, stop the chain. You can continue even if they block it. There is one thing you should never do, which is a heavy into a light. This is basically pointless because the timing is literally the same so even if you let go of the heavy or if you switch it into a light which is done by letting go of the heavy button and then going into a, and then tapping your light this is pointless because the timing for the parry is exactly the same for the heavy and for the light so if you do this it'll just get a light parry on you so it's literally a pointless now onto his salt feints. You can do a kick, it guarantees a heavy. You can do a uh, hold back the movement key into a guard break, which will make you grab the opponent. That will also give you a, he a heavy. You can salt feint the kick into the, the grab, which will also give you a heavy. 
you can still faint the heavy into a kick, which will also give you a heavy. No, I, I didn't let go, I forgot. You can also do a, a heavy into the grab. This is probably the best one. I, all, I, all, I do this a shit ton of time because people will just go for the parry because they don't see this coming. You can also go from a heavy into a kick into a grab. It takes half my stamina. And it really isn't that useful. It's very rare for me to use this. Now onto the dodge. You, as you can see, you can dodge very fast in the stands. And you can go into the, the special moves pretty fast after a dodge because the recoveries are very short. So, going from a side dodge into a side light is pretty quick. And that's about it. Your back dodge takes 600 millisecond recovery, so you shouldn't really do this that often. If you're going to this dance, you should keep your distance because if anyone guard breaks you, you can't counter it. And, you know, that'll completely ruin your, your combo. Onto his running attack. It's the, probably the worst running attack in the game. Because the first swing only hits one entity. So basically, if it hits one minion, nothing else is going to get hit. It's, uh, it's really broken. But the follow-up heavy actually hits more than one. It, it actually works as it should. This has been a problem since the beginning of the of season three. Yeah, season three when he was introduced. There's a lot of complaints on it, but the devs still haven't fixed it. I don't know why. On to his zone attack. It's three attacks. All of them deal 25 damage. This is only useful in ganks. And well, that's about it. It's in ganks. Also, onto the guard break punishes. If you guard break, you guy you get either a light. A zone, or you can throw the opponent into a wall, into a guaranteed top heavy. The Celtic Curse, which is probably my favorite move. <laughs> this was the move that really got me interested in Highlander, because I could constantly do this and switch target and go into top heavies. It's, it's probably the, the most fun move that he has. So this move can switch target when you soft faint it. If you want to switch target, you need to soft faint it into a side heavy from each side. No matter which way you go, it will deal 25 damage. Now with season 5, he has this new ability that if you just hold the heavy, you'll go you switch to the offensive stance and you can just follow up from there. A great move to do is to just do this and then go into a light because people won't even understand that you actually fainted this and then you just go into a light it's a continuous indicator and well it only guarantees you 10 damage on my case 13 but it's a good move you can also just go into you know a grab or let me just recover my stamina you know your gigantic soft fang combo anything also, be careful when you do this move. If you have any stance, and then you continue continue to have your stance, and you don't change it to the top to hold it, you'll just soft faint it. So, if you want to go into the offensive stance, be sure you switch your stance to the top, like this. So, I have it on the side. I do this, and then I hold it when my stance is on the top. I have to, I have to put this disclaimer because sometimes you might forget to do this and then you'll just do the soft thing into the side heavy and then get e very easily parried. On to being a turtle with a Highlander. Parries and whatnot. Remember that this has gear stats on so, you know, it's not the actual damage values I'll actually t tell you the damage values. Parrying a heavy will guarantee you a light that deals 15 damage. There it deals 20 because of gear. You can also go for a light instead of a parry. This will deal an unblockable light like a crushing counter strike from a, a warden. And it will deal 30 damage. So basically you have an attack coming instead of parrying you just do a light. But remember this can only works for you know, normal attacks. It doesn't work for unblockables because it's a superior block attack. And it will deal a 30 damage unblockable light. Which you can just follow up with whatever, you know. It's just you just start your light chain. 
Just, you know, these two. Now, on to pairing a light, which I'm hoping this Highlander will do. You can switch into the offensive stance and then do it unblockable. I didn't do it that time because I wanted to show you how you do it. You can't switch stance. You know, you pair your light, you don't switch stance, and then you instantly hold it and go into the heavy. This is how you get a light parry punish. You don't switch stance, you don't go for a regular heavy, you simply parry, hold, keep holding the heavy bu button key, and then let go, and there you go. You get a guaranteed unblockable heavy, Balor Might, whatever it's called. Now, onto special punishes on the advanced guide. If the enemy is exhausted and you throw them into a wall, you get a guaranteed top light into a top heavy. Now this is very tricky. You can't throw him backwards because throwing backwards takes a little bit too long. So you need to be throwing him forward or sideways into a wall directly. And it will guarantee you a top light or a side light whatever into a top heavy which deals the total of 60 damage depending on your gear obviously. Now, if you parry someone and you have revenge, you also get this guaranteed top light or side light, whatever, into a top heavy. Now, if you also have revenge and you throw them, or they're exhausted and you throw them, you can also throw them backwards, do a top heavy, and then go into your offensive sense mix-ups. If you go for a kick, if they're a slow character, they'll most likely get hit by it. If they're a fast character, you can soft fit it into a grab and you'll most likely get it. Okay, on to the special, more advanced guide when it comes to tech. On this part, I'll only show the tech, and there's not much tech into the Highlander. But, you know, it's still interesting to know. So, when you're on an offensive stance, the emote is actually a very viable move. You might not think it is, because, well, it's just an emote, it doesn't do anything. But the truth is, when you do the emote, you can soft switch your stance without the enemy knowing. As you can see, switching stance takes a very long time on this, you know, on, <laughs> on the offensive stance. So, as you can see, you have all this motion. You know, it takes a lot of time. But if you do the emote... You can instantly switch into any side. Simply by doing the emote and then switching and attacking, you will instantly do an attack from whatever side you want without, you know, going through this animation. Which is pretty cool. Also, doing the emote kind of makes you, you know, skip some frames of the... Uh, of the kick. Because this beginning motion is also this beginning motion. So it's kinda good to just throw off the opponent. Because they'll just see it like, oh, he's doing an emote, but then you just do a kick. You can also do this with the grab. You know, it, it, it seems a little bit faster, that's what I mean. It's not faster, it just seems faster because of the emote. You know, it seems like you skip so many, some some frames because you're focused on the emote so it's a good move the only things that actually go faster are the lights and the heavies be if you switch the side because you don't have to go through the animation of switching the side as you can see if i go and switch the side it takes all this time if i do the emote hold up if i do the emote it skips the whole animation of him putting the, g the weapon to his sides See, it takes a lot of time if I do the emote, it's instant. So this is the pretty much the all the tech there is to the Highlander. There is one more tech that I'm not gonna show because it's really powerful. But it's basically a salt feint on a second heavy. If you are a Highlander, you most likely know this, but if you're not you know, I'm not going to show it because it's actually really powerful. It involves the last heavy switching the sides. I'll show it to you and you can do it by just seeing what I did. I'm not actually going to tell you how you do it. Okay, so here, here it comes.
this is the tech. I'm not going to tell you how you how you do it <laughs> because I uh, you know, I'm greedy like that. <laughs> okay. But basically, you start the animation on one side, the flicker shows up and then you instantly switch. No, I didn't do it, but There you go. The flicker shows on this side, it actually goes on the top. I don't use it that often. You know, if I'm playing against an assassin that is just being a real a little bitch and dodging all my shit, I'll actually do it. It's not game breaking, but <laughs> it's 35 damage or 45 damage, depending on the stance, that you may get easier because there is a flicker. But yeah, that's all there is to know on the Highlander, I think. Hope you enjoyed it.